Hi, I'm Dave Ingerbretson. Leroy Hyatt and I would like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying the Angler's Art. Again, we got a great mixed bag for you. I say that every week, but I guess every week it's true. We've been tying such a variety of things. Uh, we're going to tie a dry fly, a nymph, and a steelhead fly. Mm -hmm. And the dry fly is going to be a little unusual. It's going to be a parachute fly, the gold ribbed, or the hare's ear parachute, parachute dry. Right, now, right. the gold ribbed hare's ear and the hare's ear, they're great nymph patterns, mm -hmm. and everybody knows them as nymphs. But you don't think them as dry. But you don't think them as a dry fly. No. And uh, so we're going to tie the, the uh, hare's ear parachute mm -hmm. dry fly this time. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to tie the uh, really a classic nymph again, the bread crust nymph and finish up with a fairly new steelhead fly, the laser green butt. Right. Well, tell us about uh, this hare's ear. Okay, the parachute hare's ear. We'll start off with deer hair. Now, I'll, I'll take the dark section of deer hair rather than the light on this end. Then where the fly gets its name, the hare's ear dubbing. I'll rib it with silver wire. The post, you can either use calf body hair or calf tail, either one. The thread will be gray and the hackle will be grizzly. Now I have a standard dry fly hook in the vise. I have pinched the barb. What size are you It's tying? a size 14. And the first thing I want to do is dress the hook just at the front section. I have to put the parachute in, the post. So you know, I ran into this fly this summer up in BC on the Elk River. The uh, hair's here? The, the hair's here parachute. Really? Parachute hair's here. I was, uh, just happened to be up there and a couple of friends of mine came along so we fished the whole day together. It was, if you'll permit me to drop a couple names, it was John Gerock and A.K. Bass. Uh -huh. And uh, we're old friends from way back and so I fished with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were on one particular pool and, and A.K. and John started kidding back and forth as they want to do and, and A.K. said, John, put on, why don't you put on your favorite? Put on your favorite. Well, I don't know if it is his favorite or not, but John, John put on this fly. Here, shoot, there, there. <laughs> parachute hairs here and uh, and did very well on it in the particular pool we were well, fishing. Be, yeah. uh, well, what I've done now is I've just evened those tips on this fly. And, you know, we've talked about it on other shows. This could also be tied with a high visible material. Sure. Uh, any of that. Now, I want this to be about the length of the shank of the hook. And we'll tie it down here in front. Take a few wraps and stand it up. I'm going to wrap directly in front of it. That's going to stand that post up somewhat. Standard warning, don't use too much material. No, no. And I'm going to leave that laid down like it is right now. I'll adjust it when I come back. I'll run my tying thread to the rear. And I'll take a small section of this dark deer for the tail. And deer being hollow, it will definitely help the fly float. Get rid of that under fur. And we'll give these a quick stack. Mm, I got a little bit too much. I'll get rid of some of that. And I want this to be about the length, the shank of the hook. So I'll measure it out that way. I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. Don't want those butts in there interfering with my post that I've already tied on. Right now I'm wrapping fairly light till I get it all bound down. Then I'll go back harder to make sure it is all sealed in place. We'll put a small section of this gold or silver wire for the rib. You don't need a whole lot of it. Don't have very far to wrap. Again, cut with the back side of your scissors. Save the points. Tie the wire in. And then we'll put the dubbing on. Now, of course, to be more in tune with the gold ribbed hairs here, you could certainly use a gold rib as sure well. Sure could. Yeah. In fact, I was shocked when I looked at this pattern and yeah. it said silver. I, I'd only seen it with the gold rib before. Yeah, that probably won't be enough, but we'll get started with it. Well, look at that. I just broke my wire off. Hmm. Well, I'll just tie it on as I tie the dubbing down. How's that? Looks good to me. I'll never tell. Okay. And we'll take one wrap behind that wire and then just come forward. I think the beauty of the hairs here is the way that that dubbing is fuzzy. And those, oh, yeah, the short really hairs is, stick out, yeah. uh, traps air bubbles, it transmits light. It looks very light. Li it, it, realistic. Uh, 
It, it looks translucent and it has a little movement. It's got everything mm -hmm. going for it and it supports the flywheel mm -hmm. too. You bet. So uh, it will the hair's there is just a very good material. Right. Now I'll take my tying thread in front of that post again, stand mm -hmm. it upright. Then I'll take a grizzly hackle fiber or hackle now, feather. You, do you wrap it all around the post with thread? I will. Okay. First thing I'm going to do though is reverse wrap this wire. After I broke it off and tied it back on, I guess we'll bring it forward, huh? Then I'll come just forward of the wing and tie it down. Now, I lost my grizzly hackle. So I'll find another one here. Now with a with a parachute fly, you can get by with a much larger hackle oh, yeah. than you would on the other. Yeah. I'll go ahead and strip that stem. I'm going to tie it so that the stem is going to go upright into that post. And I'm just going to wrap that post and the stem of the hackle. And I'm wrapping fairly soft right now. When I go back down, I'll strengthen my wrap, start pulling harder, and just give myself a nice little base there to wrap it all on. Come down and leave it in the front. Now when you wrap, I want to come all the way to the top for my first wrap, and then start down. You know what I often do is use a little of the head cement or rubber-based cement on that wrap wrap portion it into, of the post, mm -hmm. and it makes it stiffer. I've also seen people use, uh, oh, a super glue, a zappa gap, or mm -hmm. some kind of a of a glue like that. Now I've captured that feather against the hook shank with my finger opposite myself. That will hold it in place till I can get it tied down, and I'll clip that off. I got a few more stragglers hanging here. And now I'll put a little bit more dubbing on it. And get wrapped in front to finish the fly off. And there it is. We'll put a quick whip finish on it. Let that slip. I'll do it with my, I got a rough place on a finger. I'll do it with my tool. And there's the hare's ear parachute fly. We've tied dark deer for the tail. We've ribbed it with silver wire. It's the natural gray rabbit dubbing. The wing post is white calf tail. The hackle is grizzly. All right, now we're going to tie our nymph, and tonight it's going to be the bread crust, bread crust nymph. nymph. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that fished as much in the west as no. I did in the east, but it's a good nymph. I've uh, read about it a, a lot. A good nymph to fish anywhere. I don't mm -hmm. know why it isn't as popular out here, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a very old nymph. Okay. Uh, got a good reputation. Why don't you tell us how we're going to tie it? All right, we're going to use Swiss straw. This fly has a double ribbing on it. We'll use brown Swiss straw. It will also have... Uh, oval gold. The body material itself will be an orange dubbing, the thread black, and the hackle on it will be the grizzly hackle. I have a size 14, no I have a size 12 hook in the vise, and I'm going to go ahead and dress the hook shank as we always do. Come back to the back. This fly does not have a tail of any kind. I'll tie in this first rib. I'll tie in the second piece of Swiss now, straw. Now talking what about I've the done. rib, uh, the original pattern does not call for Swiss straw. No. That's a substitution we're making. Uh, do you want to tell us about the original ribbing material and why we've changed? Well, the original called for a rough grouse uh, tail feather. What you do is take this feather and strip a section of this center quill off. We fought this feather a long time and never could get any to strip off. Now, I have done it uh, in the past when I was using these nymphs a lot, mm -hmm. but it's a miserable material yes. to work with. 
And a lot of people don't have access to grouse tail feathers anyway. And probably not all so, that necessary. So we decided to try to uh, modify the pattern a yep. bit with this Swiss straw. So traditionalists, you'll have to forgive us. <laughs> um, but that's what we're doing. Okay, now I'm going to dub the body with orange dubbing. And I want this body tapered. It's probably going to take me, even though this is a size 12, it's probably going to take two or three times to get it built to a taper. But we'll see what happens. And I'll take uh, a couple of You can of vary that orange shade too sure from, can. A, Make from a rusty darker. orange to a brighter orange. Mm -hmm. And I fact, a lot of them are tied with a brighter orange than that. Or a deeper orange, a more of a burnt uh, orange. Well. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm saying a little orangier orange. Orangey orange. <laughs> a little, little bit more of an orange color, but again, okay. they, they vary, and uh, I've seen lots of different variations of it. Uh, I think the standard was kind of a, a, a rusty orange or an orangey rust okay. uh, with a little more orange in it. Now you can see there's a little taper there starting to take shape now. One more to strip of dubbing, and I think I'll have it made. Let's see what that does. And there's the dubbing on it. Get all that folded out of the way. And like with any rabbit, there's going to be some guard hairs left in. I don't think that's going to make any difference at all. Now I'm going to run my Swiss straw forward. What I've done with that Swiss straw is just peel a small section off. I have it wrapped or uh, twisted together, and I'll just go forward with it, keeping them, you know, not real tight together. You know, that, Leroy, that really does look good. With the Swiss straw? Yeah, it really yeah. does. And it's certainly Shows a lot up more available nice. and easier material to use. Now with the uh, oval gold, I'm going to wrap each wrap of that gold just in front of the rib of Swiss straw I put on. Right. And you will still be able to see that oval go through it. Well, now, I've got to say, I'm looking at the monitor here, and it's uh, a little hard for me to see the fly, actual fly from here. Uh -huh. And looking at the monitor, I'd say that's just about exactly the right color orange. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. And then for the hackle, and I'll tell you, a soft hackle fly is hard to beat. I mean, this is called a nymph. But any soft hackle fly mm. is hard to mm. beat. Strip off a little bit of that stem. Tie that stem down. Probably should be using a set of hackle pliers on here, but let's see if we can get away with it. I don't see it. how you can do it without hackle pliers. I, I have a hard time with, with the grouse because it's so soft, and I break it, and I pull it, and I... Uh, well, I may have to find I, a pair. I, I just can't handle that small fly without a f small feather without a hackle. Well, pliers. I don't want a whole lot of wraps around it either. Yeah. Uh, oh no, two three wraps is no plenty. No tops, and then it all just will stream back over the body material. Yeah. Get rid of a couple of those. Fold it all back out of the way. Come backwards just a little ways over that. And we'll put a whip finish on it. And there's a bread crust nymph. Uh, well, I guess we should call it actually a modified bread crust nymph. The Hyatt bread crust. No, right. <laughs> okay, it's an orange dub body. It has the uh, gold and brown Swiss straw ribbing. It has soft grizzly hackle for the hackle. Okay, now for our last fly today, we're going to tie the green butt laser. Right. The laser green butt. That's better. Okay, that's better. The laser green butt, and right. it's a steelhead fly. A local pattern. And it's a local pattern mm -hmm. that makes use of a fairly new material that you're going to explain to us when we get right. there. Two new materials, really. Right. I'll well, show tell us it about as we them. go along. You could use black or red thread. All my steelhead flies, I've just gotten in the habit of making the head red. I don't mm. know why. It makes no difference. The wing will be white calf tail. The front third of the body will be this cactus chenille. Now, maybe a lot of people haven't seen that. If you don't have it, a regular black chenille ribbed with silver tinsel will work. Uh, the hackle will be uh, black. I will put an underbody under the, the rear two-thirds of silver tinsel, 
And then this is called Laser Wrap or Edge Bright. It comes in mm -hmm. two different. Mm -hmm. uh, what I've done is I just took some of this Edge Bright Laser Wrap. Now, what are you going to do with it? I'll show you. Okay, first thing I want to do is dress the hook shank. But as far as our materials list, you are going to underwrap the body with silver, silver tinsel, tinsel and then overwrap the rear two thirds of the body with the laser with, wrap that's to correct. make the body. That's mm -hmm. correct. Okay. No, I don't want that. I want the calf tail for the wing. Yeah, now, as, as, as viewers have seen before, when you tie steelhead flies, yeah. you generally tie the wing in first. And fold it over. And fold it, have it pointing forward. Yes. Uh, that way I keep all of the butts out of the eye of the mm -hmm. hook. It's a good technique. I really like it, and I'd, no, I'd never seen anyone do it before I saw you do it. I don't even but, know where uh, I've, I've I've started to do that now, and I it. like it. All right, I'll tie this wing on with the tips over the eye of the hook. Tie it down. Now you leave a little space between where it's tied in and the eye, little don't bit. you? A little bit, yes, yes. I have to come up here and finish it, plus you may want to uh, riffle hitch the fly. And wrap some hackle over it sometimes. Right. But no, not, I'll wrap the hackle always. behind yeah. the wing. Yeah. Now this fly, I've seen it tied with tails, I've seen it tied with uh, golden pheasant tippets, I've seen it tied with Lots of different. I don't know how necessary now, it is. It is a local pattern. Do you know who started it? Just no, for my I own don't. Interest, I'm uh, Dave Blinn may have. Uh, Bruce Henderson may have. I don't know. It just showed up. The fly sinks very well. Mm -hmm. uh, this laser wrap or edge bright comes in several colors. Now, usually it comes in flat strips, and you have yes. to cut it yourself. Yes. What I've done is I've just taken a small strip of that, and you can see it here. It's cut. What I've done is I've taken, cut just a small V or a clip a corner off here. That will help me tie it in and not have the large lump. Of course, the beauty of the material is that the edge is just bright glows. fluorescent. When the light hits just it, just glows. It looks flat green, but when you see the edge and the light hits it, it just yes. comes alive like fire. You'll be able fire. to see that. It'll pick up every bit of this silver wrap that we're putting underneath it. Right. The, the fly will sink very well. This uh, laser wrap does let the fly go readily down. Uh, it's good for lake flies. Uh, it comes in eight or nine different colors. I've I got know. several flies that I tie using purple edge bright uh -huh. or laser wrap mm -hmm. and also orange. Yes. Now, what I'll do, take this edge bright, and it, it's a flexible material that you can, as you run your fingers over it, it will get warm and actually stretch itself out. Mm -hmm. Now I'll just start wrapping forward. You probably don't want to stretch it too much. No. The edge gets so thin it won't reflect right. the light the same way. Now I am not butting each edge up together. I am overlapping mm -hmm. each wrap. The point way is you want the edge to show because that's, that's where the brightness comes that's in. That's where it just yep. shines through. And it is just like a little beacon as it goes through the water. And we'll tie it down here. And get it off, but you can see. I'll roll that. You can see how that just shines. Well, and even a better view is if you see it from behind, where yes. you get those overlapping edges yes. showing. Now I'll put a piece of this cactus chenille in, and like I said, if you don't have cactus chenille, this is black. You can put just a regular black chenille in. Most of the time, we'll rib it then uh, with material with uh, silver ribbing. But this, I, I just kind of like this cactus chenille. I, I don't know why. It's just one well, of those things. Well, sparkle there. A little bit. I've just kind of fallen in love with it. Take a wrap back. Another wrap. And then I'm going to tie it off. This is a fun fly. Well, that's big fish. fuzzy stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. But when we get everything folded over, you'll see it will take on a different. Look, now I'll tie the hackle in, tied it in by the butt, and we'll make three or four wraps with it. And I'll stop it on top. Now, do you fish this thing on a floating line or a sinking yes, line? Yes, floating you line. Up well, you can do it either one. It do it either one, uh, the fly will sink. Uh, I've caught several steelhead with it, this fly right at dark almost, and mm -hmm. I guess it's just picking up what few rays are left. 
Or it may be in that case it's uh, not picking up any, it's just a it could you know, be. white wing in the yeah. dark, yeah. But then that's why I kind of like that little red head. It just, to me, it just really looks nice on there. You can see that cactus chenille will let that oh, yeah. uh, white oh. wing stand up really well. Well, the thing I like about the way you put that wing in first and then fold it back is you get such a neat head. Mm -hmm. You're not Very tying small. those hair butts you down bet. and you don't have hair butts sticking out yes. to get into the eye. You've got room left to do a riffle hitch if you want mm -hmm. to. We might tell people what a riffle hitch is. Well, a riffle hitch is nothing more than a half hitch. You tie the fly on normally through the eye of the hook. Mm -hmm. Then it's nothing more than a half hitch behind the eye with the, let me think a minute, with the leader coming out the upstream side of the fly. Mm -hmm. What that does, it will not let the fly sink at all. It'll stay right on top and just vibrate through the when water. When the line's tight in the when current, the that fly tight, just bet. wiggles mm -hmm. and, and riffles. Yes, sure and, does. Uh, that was first discovered by, I believe, by Atlantic salmon fishermen. Oh, it could well be. And it was later adopted by the uh, steelheaders. Mm -hmm. And lots of people do it. Uh, the first person I think I ever heard talk about it was Keith Stonebreaker here yeah, in Lewiston. I'm sure. uh, now, do you uh, do you ever have trouble with your half hitch coming off? Yes, I do. I, f uh, I find that oftentimes after I've fished, I looked at look at the fly and the half hitch is off. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I think some of those guys. I think I've heard them say that they're even tying a double half hitch on uh -huh. them. Uh, whatever, you know. Occasionally, I. I get to where I don't even like to half hitch them sometimes. I may not catch as many fish that way, mm -hmm. but the fly will swim very well without it. Have and you ever heard of any putting the half hitch over the wing? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and that kind of holds it in place so it doesn't slip over the head. I haven't heard that. If uh, You might come back here into this cactus chenille and put it on, uh -huh. like when you have a dry fly, a muddler, something like that, mm -hmm. come behind the head mm -hmm. on the muddler and yeah. tie it on. It'll never it, go it away. It seems to me that I've heard of somebody throwing that half hitch loop over and coming up behind the wing. That could be. Uh, wouldn't be I, hard to do. I'm just not do. sure. It wouldn't be hard to do, and no. I, I, I believe I've no, heard that. No, it wouldn't be hard to do at all. Well, but that's the laser green butt. It has a silver tinsel underbody. It has the green laser or edge bright for the uh, rear two-thirds. has cactus chenille, black cactus chenille for the front third. has black hackle has a white wing. You know, Leroy, that last fly we tied was a steelhead fly, and we mm -hmm. had a particularly good steelhead season around oh, here on some yes. of the rivers. And the thing that really tickled me was the number of women I saw <laughs> steelhead fishing this year. More and, and more. And even Shirley went with me. Oh, really? She had never wanted to try steelhead fishing, and this year she went with me, and she enjoyed it, and she's going to well, do it again. Well, good for her. And, you know, that's kind of... Uh, or what I don't know the word. It's kind of indicative of the number of women that are getting mm -hmm. involved in fly fishing of all types. They're starting to make special rods, vests. That's, a, that's the neat part. You can waders. get equipment clothes that fit. That's right. Uh, that's right. Surely you've had a pair of small men's waders, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody from a company said, "Well, have you tried our women's models?" And no. Well, she got a pair of those, and. To this day, every time she slips them on, she says, oh, those waders are great. Oh, They're okay. proportioned for her. Sure. The foot last is better. Sure. And uh, lots of women, you know, women can be very successful. It doesn't require strength. They can be very good casters, very good fly tires. Women make and excellent fly tires. A lot of men are discovering the pleasure of sharing the sport they love most sure. with the person they love most. Sure. And you're seeing a lot of couples or single women out. It's mm -hmm. just, it's, I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Well. Today we've tied the uh, hair parachute hairs here dry, right. we tied the bread crust nymph, and we tied the laser green butt steelhead fly. Mm -hmm. Again, a wide range of flies for you to try, try variations of it, come up with your own, and tune in again next week and we'll try to give you some more variety. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed it. We sure have a good time anyway. Yes, we do. And thanks for watching and good night. Dave and Leroy have produced two 90-minute videos covering new and exciting tips on how to make your fly tying better and more effective. They introduce you to everything you need as a beginner and demonstrate helpful techniques for intermediate tires. Fly Tying Techniques Volumes 1 and 2 are available by calling 1-800-883-0124. Cost of each video is $28.95 plus shipping and handling or get the two volume set for just $52.95. You can also order the programs in this series. Each 90-minute videotape includes three programs for just $22.95, plus shipping and handling. To order Fly Tying, the Angler's Art Videos and Techniques tapes, call 1-800-883-0124.